This is the last video lecture for the review booklet that I handed out in class. Topic 9, Kinetics and Equilibrium. Uh, we should know a collision theory and that it states that a reaction is most likely to happen if particles collide. Uh, we should know the rate of a chemical reaction depends on factors. Temperature, if you increase the temperature, you increase the rate of a reaction. If you increase the concentration, if you increase the surface area, if you have a catalyst, all of these things will increase the rate of a chemical reaction. Equilibrium is when the forward reaction and the reverse reaction occur at the same rate. Doesn't mean equal products it just in reactants. It just means that their concentration remains constant. They don't have to be equal to each other, just constant. The Chatelier's principle, we know it as a shortcut, same side of the double arrow, the opposite thing will happen. On the opposite side of the double arrow, the same thing will happen. We need to know a potential energy diagram, which we're going to outline down below, which is number seven and number eight. Number nine, I'm going to show a picture of. A catalyst lowers activation energy so that the <coughs> excuse me, reaction happens quicker. Entropy is a measure of disorder. A system with greater disorder has greater entropy. So that's the, one of those words we've used a couple of times this year uh, that you have to know. Um, when a reaction happens, the system tends to go to lower energy which means it gives off energy, it's exothermic, and higher entropy. So they tend to go to more disorder. So if you think of the magnesium I burned in class, it will release energy and it releases smoke. So it's exothermic and it becomes more disorderly. And these reactions are what we call spontaneous, meaning they occur naturally. So we are going to draw a potential energy diagram. The first thing we have to recognize is what kind of reaction is it? Since we have lower energy at the end, this is an exothermic reaction. In an exothermic reaction, delta H is, e is negative. This represents the potential energy of the reactants. This is the potential energy of the products. This represents activation energy. The total energy in the system is called the activated complex. And the difference between the potential energy of the products and the potential energy of the reactants is the delta H. So you should be able to do an endothermic reaction also, if we have particles that are close together and then they become far apart, we would say the entropy increases. So a liquid has more entropy than a solid. A gas has more entropy than a liquid. And then the Chatelier's principle if A increases, B on the same side. 
decreases. If A increases, C on the opposite side increases. If A is removed, the system will shift to replace it. So it will shift to the left. If pressure is increased, we shift to the smaller side of moles of gas. So it will shift to the right. And if we increase the temperature, which is represented by the heat term, C will on the same side, go down. On the next page, we need to know an uncatalyzed reaction uncatalyzed And if we add a catalyst, we lower the activation energy. So this would be a catalyzed reaction. And that takes care of kinetics and equilibrium for the review packet. Okay. So our next topic, acids and bases and salts. So for topic 10, uh, we need to understand the Arrhenius definition or theory. Um, acids are H plus producers. Bases are OH minus producers. Acids and bases are electrolytes. An electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water, conducts electricity. So NaCl aqueous is an electrolyte. HCl, which is an acid, Aq, is an electrolyte. NaOH aqueous, dissolved in water, is an electrolyte. But they have to be dissolved in water. Acids produce H plus ions. Bases produce OH minus ions. This is important. Organic compounds with OHs are not bases. And alcohol is not a base. Neutralization. The H pluses of the acid react with the OH minuses of the base to form water. Titration has the formula from the back of the reference table, MAVA equals MBVB. But remember, we add HA for the number of acids in the formula and OHB for the number of OHs in the formula of the base. There's other alternate acid-base theories that the Regents asks you about. Um, one of these would go like this. If you have HCl and it reacts with water and it forms H3O plus and Cl minus, what are the acid and the bases in the forward and reverse direction? An acid is an H plus donor. A base is an H plus acceptor. So HCl turns into Cl minus. How does HCl turn into H into Cl minus? Well, it donates or it loses an H plus. So it's an acid. The H plus that it lost came here to the water. 
because the water turned into H3O plus. So how did H2O turn into H3O plus? It accepted an H plus from the acid. In the reverse direction, H3O plus turned into H2O. How? By losing or donating. That makes it an acid. Cl minus turns into HCl. How does it turn into HCl? By accepting an H plus, and that makes it a base. You really won't see this anywhere other than as a regions question, um, so we have to review it. On the next page, uh, this is pH. So H plus ions make a solution acidic. OH minus ions make a solution basic. So a low pH is an acid, a high pH is a base, and a pH of 7 is neutral. On the pH scale, each unit represents a tenfold increase or decrease in the concentration of the H plus ions. So a pH of 3 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of, careful, 4. As you head towards 1, you become more acidic. So if H plus ion concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 2, then OH minus is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 12. The pH is based on the H plus ion concentration, so the pH is equal to 2, and this solution is acidic. Our next unit is, or topic is number 11, which is oxidation reduction. Oxidation reduction, which is a redox reaction, involves the transfer of electrons. Oxidation, oil, loses electrons because the charge goes up. Reduction, rig, is a gain of electrons because the charge goes down. Electrons lost have to equal electrons gained. We can assign oxidation numbers so that we can see what's happening in terms of who's losing and gaining electrons. Electrochemical cells can be voltaic, which are the one with the two beakers, and a salt bridge, or it can be electrolytic, in which case it needs a battery. Oxidation always occurs at the anode. Reduction always occurs at the cathode. Voltaic cells spontaneously convert chemical energy to electrical energy. Electrolytic cells are the opposite. They require energy to produce a chemical reaction, and that's called electrolysis. So let's draw a quick picture of a voltaic cell. I'm going to draw a strip of copper in one and a strip of zinc in another. We connect by a wire that's attached to something that can um, show that electricity is flowing. The last piece of the puzzle is the salt bridge, which has positive and negative ions flowing through them. Each cell, half cell, is filled with an aqueous solution of the ion of the metal. And there is our voltaic cell. Nothing can be done now until table J. The higher of the two is oxidation. And as soon as you know that, everything falls into place. Oxidation, in this case, zinc is higher up. So this is the oxidation side. So this is reduction. 
So this is the anode, which is negative, and an anode, and for negative. This is the cathode, which is positive. Electrons flow anode to cathode, A to C. So electrons are flowing towards the cathode. The oxidation half reaction is the zinc metal turns into zinc ions plus two electrons. The reduction half reaction is the Cu2 plus ions gain two electrons and turn into Cu. I may add more to this uh, over the next couple of weeks, but that's pretty good now for topic 11. Topic 12, organic chemistry. Uh, I'm not going to go into this too much because we just had the test on it. Hydrocarbons contain only carbon and hydrogen, saturated, single bonds, unsaturated has at least one double or triple. So all this should make sense. Here's table R. Isomers, same molecular formula, but different structural formulas. Multiple bonds, share more than one pair of electrons. Unsaturated has at least a double or a triple. And then we need to know the seven types of uh, reactions. A last unit then is topic 13, lab skills. Uh, these are things we're going to cover in class over the next few weeks. Let's just do a couple of quick sig figs. So if I have 0 0.010, how many sig figs? 1.0010. How many sig figs? And 0 0.002. So everything to the right of the last non-zero number counts, even if it's a zero. So this has two. This has five. And this has one. So we're going to do identification in class and lab safety. We'll talk a little bit more about. That's, I would say that uh, pretty much covers the lecture. So it did go 18 minutes, but as I said in class, um, I'm not going to give you any homework for the weekend. So have a great night. You can still do some review work to get ready for the test on Friday but we'll see you in class on Friday. Bye.